Hello, I'm Gav. I'm Dan. We're the Slow Mo Guys, and today we're looking at some slow mo clips from the internet. Let's get started. This is Slow Mo Water Balloons by Legendary Shots. 87 million views on Facebook. Everyone's seen a balloon of water yeah. get dropped or popped, and you never see it for this long with your eyes, so that's why it's quite satisfying. When they pop, the rubber is so much faster than the, the gravity of the water, so you, want, you end up with like the shape of the water just hanging in the air. But in this, there's a lot of the balloon not popping. Yeah. Equally as interesting, actually. Equally as interesting, makes some very weird shapes, lots of ripples. It's as if water had incredible surface tension. You end up left with these really bizarre moments in time, like when this glove is like right up the balloon, it's almost like an umbrella. Split second moment in time, but thanks You're to high speed, we can see it for ages. This video, it's nice and sharp. A lot of high speed cameras have an optical low pass filter, which kind of softens it. I don't think this camera has one because it looks very crisp, kind of poor dynamic range. So it looks like it doesn't have one. They pick the right frame rate, which I assume is just like we do, the maximum frame rate at the highest resolution. If you do that, then it also means that you can go down from there always. Yeah. They've also shot it square. I'm not sure if that was shot like that or whether it's been cropped. A lot of the high speed cameras we used to use actually have a square sensor and then you can just crop to HD or if you want to shoot a full square, you basically got the fastest Instagram camera. Hardest thing with something like this is actually getting the balloons right. We've done it a few times with different balloons and they've all got different levels of strength. Sometimes they pop, sometimes they act differently. Yeah, we've shot stuff where we've tried to pop a balloon like on your head or something like that and it, it just wouldn't go. They'll pop while you're filling them but then when you actually throw them, they for some reason bounce off and it all depends on just like the quality of the rubber or how long they've been in a drawer. Mostly the second one for us. Mostly the second one. It's probably just been on the floor of the garage. Yeah. This is Will Bulletproof Glass Stop a 50 cal bullet by Full Mag. Richard Ryan, met him, haven't we? Mm -hmm. He's done a ton of great high speed of guns, lots of gun based stuff. And you'll notice here that a lot of his footage is really, really widescreen because on most high speed video cameras, if you lower the resolution, you gain frame rate. And because the bullet is always yeah. sort of left to right, it takes up very little of a, an HD frame. You can just lose the top and bottom. If and then he actually does a very good job in the edit, sliding that up and maybe showing it zoomed in again, just so that mm. the frame is filled. This is obviously slow enough to see a bullet traveling through the air, which is an incredibly high frame rate. But it also just shows you how quickly gla glass cracks. It's faster than the bullet. Seems to be. Mm. When we shoot stuff with bullets, it's always good to have an exposure time of at least 10 microseconds, just so it's not a total blur. Because you can still shoot in slow-mo, and if your shutter speed isn't right, you'll have a ton of pictures of just a very, very blurred bullet. To reduce motion blur, you have to increase the shutter speed, which drastically lowers the amount of light you have, which means you have way less depth. It's always preferable to have the bullet sort of going left to right as opposed to at an angle because it'll be in focus the whole time. And usually the depth is, you know, very small. Really, really small. He shoots a ton of his stuff completely solo, sort of framing up on standing objects and then shooting the gun, triggering the camera himself. It's very impressive. Can you just hold the bullet in, please? <laughs> This is Tattooing in Slow Motion by Smarter Every Day, actually my favorite YouTube channel. Destin makes these videos. Legend. This is a great example of showing something that everyone has seen, but in a completely different way. With any slow motion, I think it's pretty difficult to shoot, especially with macro. You've got such a fine amount of focus. In slow motion, you need a lot of light because each exposure time is so small. Getting the, the focus is, is much more difficult when you're in slow-mo and doing macro at the same time. You've got so, sort of millimeters of depth. So Destin's done a great job here of absolutely nailing that focus yeah. and not uh, blinding everyone with the lights. Especially with the fact that the needle is moving towards the camera. You wouldn't necessarily notice, but you wouldn't know exactly how hard it is to get that sort of footage. You're really seeing two levels down on stuff that you just can't see with your eye. I mean, you see those with your eye and it's almost like you're watching a blur, like you're watching a vibration. People get tattooed every day, but it gives you a completely new perspective on it, which is pretty cool. I've always wanted a tattoo, but after seeing this video, I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure I can take it. This is two slow motion lightning strikes. Nature, once again, an excellent subject for slow-mo. Lightning is very, very, very fast. So what is um, it, like a third of the speed of light? Like ten, tenth of the speed of light coming down, I think a third yeah. going up. We actually know this because we recently filmed lightning much faster than this clip, actually, up to 103,000 frames a second. You can't necessarily see the travel of the lightning in this clip, but you can see it lingering in the air long enough to the point where you can tell it's in slow motion. When the event in high speed is, is so short, it's very hard to f find the clip. If you're shooting 100,000 frames a second for five seconds, your clip lasts like 0.05 of a second. Because lightning is that fast. It's very difficult to find where it is. So we actually used something called image-based auto-trigger, which lets us know the exact frame 
and it triggered the camera itself on the frame of the lightning. So we yeah. can very quickly see where it was, save it, and move on to the next clip. The last thing you want is to miss good lightning strikes because you're still saving the previous one. Also, it means that you don't have to trim the footage. So imagine if you're saving eight seconds of footage just for one lightning strike, you don't have to then save the entire thing yeah. and wait for it to do that and then carry on. You can just... You don't want to keep three million pictures of the sky when only, you know, a couple of thousand have lightning in them. This is WTF flat ground tricks, 1,000 frames a second. Skateboarding. Skateboarding always looks good in slow motion. I'm noticing a lot about this footage. There's a lot of aliasing, which to me says there's no optical low pass filter. There's also sort of very dark areas and then very blown out areas, like the guy's shirt, yeah. super blown out. And this is just an example of earlier high speed video cameras had a pretty lousy dynamic range. So bright stuff blows out way sooner, dark stuff falls off way sooner. So you end up with like sort of very contrasty looking footage. Still, perfect to see what's going on here. The quality of light looks like it was evening. Makes it more difficult to actually get stuff when it's in the evening, because you can definitely tell when the sun is lower. I quite like it though. A chill, sunny day vibe. We did a video with Tony Hawk actually, and uh, Dan broke his wrist. I did. Trying to impress him. Trying to do some skateboarding <laughs> that I clearly couldn't do. This is Veritasium slinky video, two million views. Very cool, very simple demonstration of how when you drop a slinky, it all compresses and the bottom doesn't move anywhere in space until it's completely landed. Physics. Physics, cool physics. We shot this video as well. Yeah. Sort of so cool. Some of the stuff uh, I like about shooting things in slow motion is you get to see things from a scientific perspective that you wouldn't normally get to see necessarily, or it's more difficult to perceive. And it's a really good demonstration of that. Veritasium is an excellent educational channel. Mm. Highly recommend it too. This is a slow-mo clip of a bird having breakfast. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> That's great footage. <coughs> I kind of fail the video, actually. <laughs> Puts it in his mouth and then throws it away. I honestly think animals are the best subject for slow-mo. Yeah. Like something as simple as that, you're like, oh, that's amazing. And it also makes you wonder how often animals fumble their lunch. <laughs> I mean, I was once filming a bee drinking pollen from a flower and it fell out, sort of rolled out back because it got drunk. But in slow-mo, you see tons of that. That clip was probably a very short space of time as well because birds like that small tend to move very quickly. They're very high metabolism, so that looks really fast. And judging by the snow moving in the background, it's probably only a few hundred frames a second, if that, maybe on a phone, because it's very snowy, you've got that nice flat light all around, nice and bright looking. Mm -hmm. So even on a phone, it looks good. Pretty much like having a perfect lighting situation. Yeah, a nice bounce. I think they've got this probably lot of patience and maybe almost training the birds to be able to be used to you. There's almost no chance that this is the first time yeah. this person has put food in their hand. They've yeah. probably done that months before. I mean, everyone's seen a bird eat, but no one's ever seen it that slow, dropping its food out of its mouth. It's also very cute and uh, you can't like make a bird do that. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> All right, that's enough. This is sneezing in slow motion. This is actually a really old video. I think I saw this about a decade ago. It's also really difficult to do. When someone's sneezing, it's an involuntary movement a lot of the time. It's very difficult to actually capture that. People will move forwards and backwards. Particles are actually not too difficult in CG. The way they're sort of coming out of focus, it looks very real. You might as well do it for real. I have noticed also the, the lip flappiness is real. It's definitely done at least the movement. I mean, there wouldn't really be any reason not to do it for real, apart from getting the cameraman wet. Frame rate wise, it's probably an easy thousand. The the lip flappage is yeah, sort of in between 500 and 2000 FPS. I want to say this was almost, this was an advert or something for like washing your hands or like Kleenex or something. I can't remember what it was, but it was something to do with germs. It's perfect. This is an Instagram video at the Hoover Dam, 7 million views. Great demonstration of an updraft. So with, with tall buildings like skyscrapers and, you know, big flat walls like a dam, the wind will hit it and go up. Has nowhere else to go and it's sort of funneled upwards, isn't it? I think this is so cool because it's literally the complete opposite of what you'd expect. It messes with your head a little bit when you see physics working the, the wrong way. Even though it's working absolutely the correct way. <laughs> this was definitely shot on yeah. a phone. Someone was probably just like, I'm just gonna pour some water off here. Bloody hell, look what it did, whip your phone out. Yeah, it's pretty windy, um, let's try this. But Which is know, what's cool about it, I suppose. Maybe we should take our phantom to the Hoover Dam, see what goes up, see what goes down. Mm. So this is Venus flytrap in slow motion and macro. Is that slow motion? Isn't that just normal <laughs> frame rate? You can see he's sort of slowed down regular speed footage, which is why it's like the whole reason high speed works is that you're taking way more pictures in the one second space, because if you don't, you end up with pictures missing. I mean, if I was to swipe my hand really quickly like that, and it was taking maybe 25 frames a second, you get a picture here, maybe a picture here and a picture here, and then that's it. But with slow motion, you take hundreds 
or thousands, and you get a much more smooth image. We can actually see what's going on. It gives you more time to take in what's happening, but you can get a slow motion effect with just any DSLR. If you just play back slower than you shot, like you can record at 60 FPS and play back at 24. Yeah, as long as you play something back slower than you shot it, it's slow motion. This is the giant six foot water balloon made by us. Yep. This was the video that actually made our channel take off. Our videos around that time were getting about 20 to 30,000 views per video. And this got a million views in a day. Which back then was actually two million. a yeah. big deal. Yeah, I went on the news to talk about this video. Currently has 177 million views, which as far as we're aware is the most viewed slow-mo clip on YouTube. <laughs> That's nice. Which is crazy. It was me jumping on a balloon until it popped. We uh, tried lots of different things, jumping out of a tree. Of all the things that I thought would happen, I didn't for a second think that the balloon wouldn't pop. Yeah. I just bounced off it. I, you actually see me get air as, like, as it sort of flings me back into the air. Yeah, I remember when I was filming this one unusually at the beginning and you kept bouncing off of it. Yeah. And I was like, no way, this is unbelievable. And that's what's fun about some of the things we do. Sometimes we just don't expect that to happen. This was one of the early videos we filmed on the Phantom Flex which did 2,500 frames a second in HD. Good old camera, that one. One of the few clips where I'm actually doing the thing. Yeah, it's mostly me um, doing the thing. I thought I'd enjoy that one. <laughs> <laughs> if there was anything I would do differently now, I would probably jump from much higher. I would be the one doing it for a start. Or you'd be doing it. Yeah. I think I, you were unavailable that day. We started filming a different day and not managed to get exactly what we wanted. And then Yeah, there's actually a little fun fact about this clip. At some point it fades out and it says some time later. I think it was actually like three weeks later because you had then gone into the army to do something. I had to quickly finish the video because the first time I jumped on the balloon, it popped. I'd uh, triggered it slightly too early, so you didn't see the everything popping out everywhere. Basically, there's a reason now that I just take care of the filming and he does it. However, the thing is, it made it so much better because it meant the balloon got much bigger and... Sure, the, the second time we did it, it was a six foot balloon instead of a five foot balloon. Yeah, but it also got a lot bigger as well. Because it was a bigger balloon. No. So you're saying you made it better by messing up the first yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. Better video? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Good videos. I think there's, uh, there's people doing good work out there in yeah. the slow-mo field. Hmm. Tons of people with access to different equipment. I think it just shows that you don't necessarily need the world's greatest high-speed cameras to make some genuinely interesting slow-mo footage. A lot of phone stuff out there. A lot of there? good phone stuff, yeah. Hmm. And that'll only get better as technology moves on.